delighted because I love to write and I love to read. And I think we're all here because we all have that same passion yes. for reading and writing. And so I just want to really make this as basic as I can um, in a way to say, get a notebook. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care what it is, how you put it together. Just get a good old fashioned 99 cent notebook and your brain dump. Bless you. Bless you. Throughout the day, all day, nighttime, put it next to your bed, whatever it is. If you're in the car, have an audio, brain dump all day. And it's the only way I can tell you to get ahead of writing a memoir. To be able to write about what you have in your head, get it out. I know that was my first mistake. I was afraid to get it out. And then once I got it out, how was I going to put it together? And so if I implore you with anything of learning from my lessons is that I ended up having several notebooks because I had several <laughs> book ideas. So I was like, oh wait, this idea. Just put it down. It doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be pretty. There's no way to say you have to start this process. And there's no right or wrong way. I want to assure you. Start wherever you are. Um, at the time, I was BC before child, um, <laughs> and, and life was different. So I had lots of free time, and I was a career woman doing things, and I'm like, oh, but my brain is stuck. And so getting ahead of that fear and getting ahead of that trepidation, I had to get out of my head and really say, what did I want to write? Now, when I wrote my first book here, Leadership Building Box, An Insider's Guide to Success, this is my first dog-eared copy from now 10 years ago. Wow. <laughs> and I say, you know what? God bless America, because I took my brain and I put it out on paper. I didn't know how it was going to look. I didn't expect it to look like this at the end, but this is it. And what I want to implore you is to say, how do you get what you have in your head out to write a story about what you want to do? So think about Nelson Mandela, OK? Mm -hmm. Everybody knows iconic. His story, his memoir, if you've not read his autobiography or biographies, pick them up because it's phenomenal. I mean, the one that he has, Walk, excuse me, for freedom, the idea that you have an idea of what he wanted to say about all of these years of experience of being incarcerated to the journey that he had prior to that and then obviously becoming a national political figure and someone who in South Africa talking about apartheid, that's a lot of story right there. Mm -hmm. And if I sat back when I read it, I was like, whoa, how in the world did he do this? Now you have help, but I want to ask you to just jot down a few things. Do you want to tell a story? Do you want to tell a story? You know, a Nelson Mandela or an Eleanor Roosevelt, they can tell stories about themselves and all these chapters. You can also talk about, do you want to have a message? Do you have something you're trying to say you want people to take action and do? Um, I know my author friend here, you see we see each other in the field, and I actually remember where I met you now years ago at an event downtown, and I was like, that's where I remember seeing her because it was for a cause. It was for a specific purpose, and for a specific that led to the podcast and sharing of a message. And so how can we talk about what is our message that we want to share? Also think about a theme. Do you have something where mine is a leadership theme? Everything I have with that is all about I would be in jobs and I would be in positions and say, why don't we have better leaders? Why can't I be the leader? Who is that leader? Hey, wait a minute. Why don't we just write about leadership? There's a book that, excuse me, a quote from Toni Morrison where she talks about, if you haven't read the book yet, can't find it, I'm paraphrasing, then write the book. <laughs> okay, so I finally got off my duff and said, look, I don't like this stuff, this leadership book. No, dis no disrespect to all the lovely leadership <laughs> authors out there. I love them all. But the experience spoke to me, but it spoke at me. And it didn't speak from my perspective. My, me, at that time a 20-something, career woman, high achiever, trying to do things before child. And I was like, hey, you know what? I'm going to write my own book. And it ended up being sequential. And why I say that in these fair areas, a story, a message, a theme, a sequence, because this was actually a book just about my political career, just about my work in the school board, just about my work in trying to be a change agent. And I did not write it in the context of name pointing, finger pointing or name calling. I did not write it in the sense of this party, that party, or those people. I wrote it in the context of how can we be better leaders, period. And I wrote it in the sense I wanted it to be instructional. So in the back of the book, I said, wait a minute. Uh, yeah, this is kind of part memoir, but I have all these tables in here. Lest anybody fall off the wagon and not know how they want to become a better leader, guess what? Here's the key. Awesome. And then when I had my book coach, who now is deceased, I call her my book doula, Jan B. King, was a publisher, high-ranking publisher in New York City. She took me to New York City, took me under her wing. I met her at a conference. We talked about networking, the importance of networking. 
And I said, you know, Jan, help me. I've got to get this stuff out of my head. What do I do? And she said, just start writing. And it was amazing when she took me to New York City with my book for book signing at Book Authors Expo. And I was like, hello, I have arrived. And then it was like, okay, wait, you know, buy my book. And bookseller, book publishers, and others are like, who are you? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, what, what are you writing about? Oh, yeah, whatever, dismiss. And I had written it already at that point, self-published, because I said, I want to write it my way. Mm -hmm. And so what I want to encourage you is to think about how you want to approach this, because it's not just about writing a book. This is my calling card. This gets me indoors. It gets me consulting opportunities. It keeps people at top of mind. They go, did Don write that leadership book? Yeah. So national associations will call on me for quotes, or they'll ask me to write something, or they'll ask me to come and do training. And so it is a way to open up new opportunities. So I told a story about my experience being the youngest African-American woman elected to the school board. This was, gosh, now I'm dating myself, 2002. <laughs> Uh, 2006, pardon me, I started getting all my stuff together in 2002. I formulated a team. And I said, how am I going to make this run? I want to make a difference in my community. And I want to be able to do something. And so I got together people, local leading authorities and community leaders and others, and I got them rallied together. And that was the great little backstory to being elected. I pounded the pavement, got out there, held up signs and all this. And the school board, it was nonpartisan, so I didn't have to do anything other than really dog and pony show, but my idea of being able to make a change and do something, I had no idea I was going to write books. I had no idea that at the time I was working and moonlighting in my campaign life to say, what was I going to do? How was I going to make a difference? And so all that to say, this journey, this path documented here is about seven tenets. What I decided after I talked with my book doula, I said, okay, hello, I have ideas in my brain that have to come out. I don't want to be <laughs> You know, the Nelson Mandela or the Colin Powell anthologies of here's my memoir, <laughs> you know, this book that sits on the shelf, which is a great doorstop, but you know, I love it. <laughs> no disrespect to either, but I'm like, I wanted people to chew on this and be able to read it. And so the idea that I took the ideas out of my head, strategies, lessons, mistakes, problems, issues, drama, and be able to say for real, I have a chapter on called Loopholes, Potholes, and Craters. And where I was the one going, excuse me, Mr. Chairman, excuse me, Mr. Superintendent, I disagree with these decisions. And they're like, Dawn, be quiet. I'm like, excuse me, um, I do have the microphone. Um, Robert Sewell is a lawyer, so I can talk right now. Can he gavel me down? And I'm like, can you guys do that? You know? <laughs> Hello. And then I'm over here like a little hamster on my wheel in my notebook going, I don't think that can happen, can it? Well... And I learned how to be a better leader myself, but I also challenged the system. And when I made the decision not to run for re-election, I said, I thank you so much. I've had quite enough. I'm good. <laughs> this is a nice, you know, I'm like four wounds. And no disrespect to anyone in the community. It was the 10th largest school district in the nation at the time. Sacramento was very urban and it's very eclectic. And people were like, tap, tap, tap. Could you help us learn how to run for office? Tap, tap, tap. Could you help us learn how to be better leaders? And I was like, bing. Light bulb. And so all of what I had written and took as ideas and concepts and everything that I did as a brain dump, writing the stories and the messages became a message to people. And so all of a sudden I'm being asked to do things. So all of a sudden I said, I've got to get a team. So this is your next point. Please write it down. Get a team together. And I don't just mean someone who's going to be your book publisher. I mean a team. Like, who's going to put your web page together? Who's going to do your graphics? Who's going to tell you that sounds silly when you put something together? I like how that sentence, no, that sentence is awful. Rewrite it. My editor, God bless her, she's in Texas, wonderful woman. Um, I had two amazing coaches, Tama Keeves. If you don't know Tama, K-I-E-V-E-S. Tama Keeves wrote a book about This Time I Dance. And she was a lot like me. She was a corporate Harvard lawyer. And she was all in the mix and doing her thing back in the 80s and 90s. And all of a sudden, one day, she said, this is worth nothing. Boo. And said she would strike it on her own as a coach with a lot of life principles, um, fundamentals for development. And I heard her speak and it immediately clicked with me because she was a coach. And I said, gosh, I need someone to help me. And so she was one of many who helped me do the brain dump of how do you get it out and how do you take a channel, you know, a turn and say you're not going to just be in this pivot role, career woman role. I want to write books on the side. I want to be able to share a message. And so what I implore you to do is get a team, I wrote down quickly, like a VA, a virtual assistant, or a real assistant. I had several. Someone who did all of my marketing and newsletter pieces over here, and somebody else who did all the other hamster wheel stuff I didn't enjoy doing. 
books and all those other things. I'm like, oh, do the numbers, there you go, that's you. Okay, so then I had making sure that obviously Jan being, uh, before, and I say, be, before she got cancer and got very sick, and you know, it was just the idea that she was transitioning, she created replicas of herself. And I say that because today there are people like her all around because she made sure she was spreading her message. So that's my next book, to replicate me. <laughs> Um, because that's the idea of how to make sure that we are replicating ourselves. Like we were just talking about, there's plenty of room to share at the table. Exactly. Kim and I were saying, this isn't rocket science, but it's about those of us who step forward and take the leading role to do it, and to say, you know what, I courageously wrote this book, you know, buy my book, no, buy my message. Take that message and let it resonate with you, or let's work together. Um, a collaborative I just did, actually, in September, was this called Women, Women Connect. I'm so excited. Because again, women that I have known for a better part of 15 years, there are probably a dozen of us on the back here. And I was so excited because a woman who I just met at a conference again in Ho Help Network, we now are collaborative authors on When Women Connect. And my whole journey of being able to say, not just was I um, taking one piece of writing a memoir, but then taking a piece and putting it in another chapter of another book. And so the idea that you always have to be thinking about, well, yeah, I want to write my memoir, I want to write my book, but think of spin-off products or services. Um, when I started doing audio books, I said, you know what, I'd love to talk. Oh, this is easy. <laughs> wow, you know, who knew? And I actually went to a studio for a while up in Northern Virginia, great business, but guess what? The world has changed and we have apps on every third phone. We have resources and colleagues to be able to help to do that. Put it out, get it out of your head. It may sound silly, when I started to put together the chapters of what has now become that whole idea of a memoir of my experiences on the school board and giving appropriate deference, I was going to read a chapter to you, or, excuse me, a paragraph to you, but in the chapter where I talk about how do you open up your brain to talk about, you know, I didn't see that there were opportunities or access in this way for people to become better leaders. Um, in that regard, and I'd love to make sure we get a good dialogue going. How many of you were thinking about writing a memoir, book about yourself, experiences, your chapters? Okay, good handful. And so I think that it's important that as you start to think about it, and someone's already written one, I know Diana's already got that coming down the pike, and so we talk about how do you write about those experiences? How do you share? How do you really get those out? And how do you encourage others who may say, you know, one day I want to write a book. Okay, one day is now. You don't want to waste your time going, oh gosh, you know what, I wish I had written that book. Like Jan, thankfully, she was able to replicate herself before her, her death. And I really appreciate that because, you know, looking back now, that was about 10, 15 years. And I said, wow, you know what, thank goodness I actually connected the dots. And then with her charges, who are now her, her minions, you know, the people <laughs> carrying out her message. Um, one of the things I wanted to encourage you to do if you don't already, collect quotes. Collect quotes. Um, any um, messages that really resonate with you. Um, for me in the leadership genre, there are a number of key people who resonate for me. Obviously, John Maxwell is the big name. Um, Brene Brown, if you all don't know her, has stepped into that leadership space very much on the scene. And I really respect highly both of their work. But I collect quotes from what they do and I go, wow, how can I say what I need to say about something similar? So Brene Brown is talking about opening or Marianne Williamson, another person who talks about this, this opening up of how we pr provide a message and network with people. It's not just about writing a book and throwing it on a shelf and saying, here, buy my book. <laughs> it's how do we connect with people? How do we resonate with people? How do we make sure that what we are sharing is not just something that's sort of a, amorphous, but we're connecting across the spectrum. Think of it, um, have you all seen that movie? Well, maybe I'm dating myself, The War of the Worlds. And the books and the idea that people don't even read books anymore. Um, the idea that in a number of these, um, in Time Machine, another one, where you know it's just the, the lost art of reading, the lost art of being able to write. And for me, it really is about how do we have a message that translates. And so as I share with you, just a couple of ideas, and I, I thought I would share just a little bit about um, when I wrote this book and I sat down, and I actually, uh, another was networking that I heard over here. I actually had a uh, wonderful woman write my foreword for me. And it was great because when she wrote it for me, I had asked her um, specifically about writing something about, wow, what can you say about you know leadership that's different? And she said, well, Dawn, you come at it with a whole different angle. 
Um, and so here's basically what my whole take was. After life as a public servant, bringing about systemic change and connecting with people, I wanted to help others learn this too. My role had little value if I did not glean how-to strategies learned during my experiences that I could pass along to rising and current leaders. My goal was to help others understand how to achieve effective leadership. I felt compelled to tell my story in this book and to develop leadership building blocks principles, concepts for encompassing effective leadership. They're fundamentals that produce action or result that a distinguished leader directing a group toward a specific circumstance or goal can achieve. It is how leaders distinguish themselves with these seven strategies. Vision, balance, courage, creativity, global perspectives, fortitude, and infinite possibilities. In this book, I share a handful of leadership experiences and some lifelong reflections within a framework. So encompassed there in just the forward, I was able to say that what I was trying to encapsulate right there in that chapter of life, because we all have dozens of chapters of life. Experiences, our challenges, change of life, whatever it might be, and to encapsulate it and put it in and to put it into paper.